If you've seen any of Ed's oldest projects, you'll know how much of a fascination he had for zombies. It seemed like he used them in his cartoons all the time, and nowhere is this more noticeable than with the Zombie Attack trilogy. These episodes were pretty special for their time. They were the first to follow a continuing story, and they're the only classic Ed's World episodes I know of that actually maintain some sort of continuity. But are the Zombie Attack episodes any good? Well, that's what you're here to find out, isn't it? The first episode starts with the guy's car breaking down, and so they need to find a repair kit. Wait, couldn't they just call a tow truck? Maybe it's a British thing. Anyway, they go into town and discover that the whole place is infested with zombies, one of which bites Matt's arm off. Ed, Tom, and Tord go away to gather weapons to take out the rest of the zombies, only for Tord to be bitten in the process. After his funeral at the start of the second episode, Tord emerges from his grave and recruits Ed to help him find the Necronomicon in order to properly put his soul to rest. Obviously, this is a nod to Evil Dead. In fact, Ash even makes a cameo. It- <gasps> doesn't end well. Matt comes back as well and has Tom help him find the book too. But it turns out there are three books, and Matt chooses the one that sucks him into a void. Tord finds the right one and departs into the afterlife. Matt manages to escape, however, and this leads into the third and final episode, where he leads a new zombie uprising. With Tord out of the picture, it's up to Ed and Tom to stop it. Huh. You'd think for the finale to a trilogy, there'd be a lot more stuff going on, but it's actually the least eventful of the three. The only big thing I can recall happening is Ed and Tom killing a bunch of zombies. The ending's kind of fitting, and I won't spoil it for those who haven't seen it, but with the first two episodes building up so much, the third one just kind of slows down and doesn't close out the story on a particularly high note. It's sort of like the Amazing Spider-Man trilogy, only the third one actually happened. That's not to say I didn't enjoy Zombie Attack 3, because I did. I enjoyed all of them. Like with a lot of classic Ed's World episodes, the humor comes from interactions between the characters, jokes subtly hidden in the background, and the crudeness of the animation, particularly in Zombie Attack 1. The style continues to evolve over the course of the trilogy up to the final part, where it's definitely the most defined. If I'll be really honest, though, there was always one thing about the Zombie Attack episodes that really bothered me. In Zombie Attack 1, Tord starts out with the voice of Alex Lab, but then suddenly near the end it's the real Tord's voice. What, did he just get zapped with a voice changer from Space Face at some point off screen? I know Alex was voicing Tord because the real Tord didn't have a microphone to record with, but couldn't Ed just have him redub Alex's lines after getting the new mic? Or was he just that determined to get it out he didn't want to bother redoing the lip sync? Another thing that kind of bothers me is how Zombie Attack 2 uses Matt and Tord's real last names on their tombstones, but only because I try to separate the characters from their real life counterparts as much as possible. Fortunately, those two minor gripes aren't enough to ruin these episodes entirely for me. They're still a ton of fun to watch, and for the time, it must have been really exciting to see Ed pull off a standalone trilogy like this. The story's very dark, silly, and quite enjoyable, even if it doesn't have a big, epic conclusion. There are lots of spot-on Ed's World jokes, like the fact that there's just a boiling fondue pot lying around for Matt to fall in, and that his severed arm is labeled Property of Matt. It's just so ridiculous, but you can't help but love it. It's impressive how Ed manages to retain the continuity within all three episodes, during a time where he wasn't taking his work that seriously. There's a lot to appreciate about the Zombie Attack trilogy, and what it so humbly accomplished should not go unnoticed.